motion to approve the meeting is ready or written. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Any discussion on the current version of the town plan? This would include the suggested edits yep. that we got. Any concerns with the edits? Nope. Any public comment on the town plan? Seeing none. This is the night to vote to accept it, I believe. We'll entertain the motion for that. Okay, so I'll move to approve uh, the town plan as edited. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Now we'll call to order the Board of Liquor Control. First on the agenda is any comments on liquor control? Not the regular select board. Seeing none, approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from May 9th. Second. All those in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. New business. This is a first class liquor license for Chef's Downtown Deli. Our conversations with the Sheriff's Department. Um, they don't have any reason to believe uh, that this uh, liquor license would create a problem. Um, the general community, uh, the restaurant is currently operational and ha has been operational for, for some time. And, um, there's nothing to report other than that to the board. Any questions, comments, concerns on this liquor license? Mm -hmm. nope. Anything you would like? I'm going to take a motion to approve. I move to approve the uh, liquor license for uh, Chef's Downtown Deli. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Other business? That's from stuff I'm like, sorry. No samples? <laughs> 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 Motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll call to order the regular select board meeting. This is public comment is first on the agenda. Anything that's not currently on the agenda, anybody would like to bring up? Approval of the agenda. So moved. Um, if I may ask, actually, sorry about that, Pat. <laughs> not quick enough. <laughs> I know. Uh, we've been working with uh, the Chandler Group, and they have asked if we could potentially add a grant that is uh, due very soon called Our Town to the agenda. Um, we may have some issues with actually submitting the intent to apply paperwork because of uh, logins with the federal uh, government website, but uh, we're hoping that at the very least we can get some approval and we could add that item under grants, which is uh, Our Town uh, NEA grant. Any concerns over that? Nope. We also added some minutes that weren't on the agenda. The last thing I have is hearing minutes. I think we could add that under the section of the calendar. This is a public hearing for the dogs? Yeah. From July 29th? Um, yes. Any concerns on that? Okay. Now you can go for it, Pat. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Sorry. Move to approve the agenda as adjusted. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained. Motion carries. Consent calendar. This is the regular meeting minutes of July 11th. The special 
hearing of July 29th, warrants and the cemetery plot sale. <coughs> All right, make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstained? Motion carries. New business, traffic control agreement with the Sheriff's Department. Every year, the town enters into a year-long uh, agreement with the Sheriff's Department for traffic control outside of the police district. Um, we have a new agreement that was uh, submitted by the Sheriff's Department for our review, and it has uh, our town edits. Um, if the board, you know, we ask the board to approve the, the agreement. It's the standard agreement that we ask that the Sheriff's Department and the town enter into every year. Questions? Comments? Is this a higher amount than last year? Or? No, the amount no. is the same in this agreement. However, we have been speaking with the Sheriff's Department uh, about increasing. Uh, we did not increase the amount for this agreement because we just didn't increase it as we had initially told the Sheriff's Department we would work with them on. Uh, we have committed uh, for the next fiscal year budget to increase the amount uh, because this amount has remained static for the last at least two years since I've been with the town and the previous year since before I arrived. So. Yeah, we, we increased it last year or the year before because it hadn't been increased for six years. Yeah. And he was going over every time. And then he was basically charging other funds that he was getting for the work he was actually doing for us. Used to be eight or ten thousand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yep. I'll make a motion to approve the traffic control during the sheriff's department twenty nineteen. Second motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Motion carries. Thank you. Police district data brief from the sheriffs. Are we waiting for them to arrive? Yeah. Um, <coughs> we'll go on and see if they show up. We could, we could pass it on. If, if for some reason they don't arrive, I could also add it to the next month's, uh, next month's meeting agenda. Okay. Uh, assembly permit for the Green Mountain Stage Race. They're coming back, huh? They're coming back. We've expressed to the event organizers that we are becoming... Uh, bigger in the outdoor economy. That's a big issue for us. We, they said they loved being here. They want to keep coming back. Um, and they submitted the same, similar application to last year. Um, same route. They are working with the Sheriff's Department, with the State Police, that will guide the, um, the cyclists. Um, and uh, we didn't have any problems with the group last year. In fact, um, there was an event that sprung up around the stage race over at Ayersbrook Farm. Um, there was food stands that set up, there were um, there was live music, so we're hoping that build on that to actually increase, uh, increase the, the audience of, of the race. They have no employees? Uh, volunteer base, Gary Kessler is the person that we work with the most. Um, he's the person who typically submits the applications. Um, he's expressed to me that it's mostly volunteer driven, but I don't know if they have any. I, I didn't actually ask directly if they have any direct employees. The only reason I ask is their certificate of insurance doesn't show workers' comp, mm -hmm. which would lend to believe that they don't have any. Yeah, right. Volunteers. <clears throat> right. Any questions? No. Nope. Motion to approve assembly permit for the Green Mountain Stage Race. Great. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Appointment. We have Bruce Butler for trustee of public funds and uh, uh, Melissa Scalera and Bob uh, Pressy for health officer and deputy health officer. Mm -hmm. uh, I have spoken with the trustee of public funds chair, uh, 
who also happens to be Cliff Rankin, our finance director. He and the group do recommend Bruce as a, um, they, they recommend Bruce to the board to be appointed for uh, trustee of public funds. Um, I have spoken with Melissa. I've spoken with um, Jerry Ward, who is our current deputy health officer. He feels that Melissa would be a good candidate for the position. Uh, I'm not sure if they've both worked together in the past, but uh, Melissa has expressed uh, an interest in the position and understands that time requirements do vary depending on the issues and would be willing to, to help. But this isn't a job that requires necessarily a medical background. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. It's yeah, going in and seeing right. if landlords are doing what they're supposed to. Checking to see yeah. what's getting should be done is getting done. So we don't need an OBGYN. Nope. We do not. Type <laughs> certificates. Does she have we any background not. in landlord issues and that type she of thing? Because that she seems does, to be a does. bigger. They have, they they own rental fit. properties. Do they? Okay. They own oh. some rental properties. Yeah. Until they get a complaint on their own, right? <laughs> they're not in the They don't own any property in the So. Okay. She has been, uh, she came to the office, she seeked us out, she re she learned of the position when we initially advertised a zoning administrator health officer position uh, in the Herald, uh, which then sparked her interest, um, which is why she came in to, to speak to us about it. Well, I think sitting at the outside the door Any? would be somebody who can make the recommendations here. Oh. Yeah. Any questions or comments on Bruce Butler? Um, we can do that one first. Funds? I'll make a motion to apply to appoint Bruce as a trustee of public funds. We'll take care of that one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. <coughs> timely. <laughs> Very timely. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns? Mm -hmm. The applicant. <laughs> a motion. Want to make a motion? Keep it rolling. What happens when they're on vacation? Um, that's a great question, and I would assume that uh, I would assume that you guys will give us two weeks. Well, I'm just wondering who doesn't. Is that yeah. you, Adolfo, or is that me? Because that will make a big <laughs> way on how I vote. No, it would fall, it would fall to me and the, uh, uh, the Board of Health. Uh, but I, Which serving as the staff member for the Board role. of Health, I would take the bullet. Tag okay. it. Yeah, okay. tag on it. Yeah. Well, then I'm for it. You're for it. You're off the hook. You might not be for it. All right. Okay, well. Was there a motion? It was. There was. A right. second? Yep. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Um, I have a question. So, who is deputy? Um, oh, yeah. Melissa is <laughs> health officer and Bob is deputy. <laughs> Town plan amendment ratified? Is that what we just voted on in the other meeting? Uh, yes, that will, Yeah, that was the amendment that uh, we need ratified because of uh, the email conversation. Um, the vote would have to have to happen at the select board meeting. Um, so even though it was approved at the hearing, the board of selectmen have to approve the. It was need to ratify. Yeah, have to ratify exactly. Okay. A motion to adopt the town plan as amended. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries again. Transfer station infrastructure. Uh, we've received notice, so I received verbal notice from Casella of their interest in investing in the infrastructure at the transfer station. They would like to um, remove the, the garbage truck that shows up three days a week. They would like to put more permanent bins that would be more uh, accessible or accessible friendly. Um, bins that would essentially help them to reduce the cost of bringing the truck every three days, but the bins themselves would, would be stationed in a place. They would essentially remodel where it is now. Right now, we walk up a, a ramp and then there's steps. They would make it so that anyone who has to access the locations would essentially use a ramp and have access to all the three bins. 
Um, there, are, there are no concrete plans now. Uh, I've said to Casella that I would bring this issue to the board so that everyone is familiar with their interest in upgrading the infrastructure. They are not making any requests of the town. Um, I suggested to them that um, we could potentially, depending on the investment in the infrastructure, the town could potentially extend the agreement that we have with the seller because they're willing to make the infrastructure improvements as opposed to our expenditure or taxpayer expenditures. Um, they're willing to have any conversation, but at this point, there's nothing concrete because we have not received anything from them in terms of plans, environmental schematics, or even artist rendering. So. Um, they are aware of that, uh, and they intend to bring more information to the board for the next meeting. So it's just a heads up, basically. Just a heads up, yeah. yeah. Just make it easier for them. Is that the purpose? Uh, it certainly would. It would uh, save them uh, on fuel, because right now they're driving a truck down three times a week. Uh, the truck is parked in an area that, during the winter, it's not necessarily the most ideal. If they have three permanent bins stationed there, they would send a truck down only when they would have to to pick up the actual container and then ship it out. Um, so it's fewer fewer runs for them with the, the trucks. So it just makes it easier for them. It also would make it easier for um, for people bringing material to the landfill. I know we've had issues with residents uh, advising us that they can't get to certain areas, uh, they need help when they arrive, and so this would fix some of those issues. Uh, ADA issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Next on the agenda is grants, municipal planning grant. Uh, I had received word from our, uh, from Josh, our Director of Economic Development. Uh, he is interested in applying, in a, uh, applying for a municipal planning grant or receiving approval to apply for a municipal planning grant. Um, we've had three different conversations about potential planning grants. Um, I don't recall the project that we're actually looking to apply for. Um, and so what we're hoping to do is uh, obtain approval from the board to at the very least apply for a municipal planning grant. Um, one of the three options, is, one would be to determine what we could do uh, with the village laundromat in conjunction with uh, Chandler's interest in, in not owning the laundromat any longer. The other option is a municipal planning grant to determine uh, the feasibility of a child care facility over at the Singer building. Uh, that is one of the other options. Um, and so if we had approval to apply for a municipal planning grant, what we would do is submit the application by the deadline, which is, um, uh, I believe it is September, October 1st. Um, and that would be tied into the approval of our regional plan from Two Rivers Out of Quichi, which is expected to come next month. So. Mm -hmm. The only thing that will, what would happen now is just to seek approval of applying for a municipal planning grant for either one of those two projects. <clears throat> Sounds like a good thing to me. Is that a motion? Sure. Motion to uh, authorize Josh to look into securing a municipal planning grant for one of the two projects that Adolfo described. Still seconding. Second. Still second. Still second that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I just want to make sure we're specific here. Okay. Anyway. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. What's Vermont? the maximum of that? Twenty-five or twenty-five thousand dollars. Vermont Arts Council grant agreement. This is the fifteen thousand that was applied for to do the bathrooms over at the library. That's right. Uh, we had members of the Board of Trustees from Kimball Library come and speak with the board uh, several meetings ago, and um, we now have a grant agreement to perform the work. Mm -hmm. Who signs the grant agreement? You? Just because uh, it makes a difference in the motion. It would either be uh, the town or the Board of Trustees or the, the uh, library director, which would be Amy. Uh, if we could ask the board to either approve uh, that I could sign or Amy, and then this way uh, either Amy or I could sign for the grant. Okay. 
Any questions on the project? No. Comments? Mm -hmm. Concerns? Motions? What do you want to sign? <laughs> Either of them. Please come in. I don't, I don't care who signs it. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Let Amy do it. I'm fine with that. And the library, we should. That sounds like we can make a motion that would say either one of them. Either one. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, one no, either. Either. there's no, it's, yeah. it's like just get it done. Whoever <laughs> wants to sign it can sign it. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make a motion that we. Uh, uh, finalize a cultural facilities grant agreement, and Adolfo or Amy can sign the necessary documents to finish it. A second. Motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chandler, our town intent to apply for a grant. The our town grant is offered to the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, this intent to apply originates uh, with meetings that the town and the Chandler have had to try to bring them more into the community to have the Chandler uh, organization become. Uh, more than just the building itself. Uh, so the grant is um, is essentially Chandler trying to work with the town to make sure that they're bringing events to Main Street, that if the town is participating, we can close roads to have live music, entertainment, um, family-friendly activities. Um, so if the town were, the select board would authorize the town to apply for this grant, Chandler um, as the lead agency would submit the intent to apply, they would need the town to serve as a partner group because it, the, t the grant requires that a nonprofit organization serve as a lead applicant and have support from the municipal uh, governing body. So in this case, uh, approval to apply would uh, allow us to partner with the lead agency, which is Chandler, and this would be necessary in order for them to apply for the grant itself. Um, and from... Uh, Karen Dillon, what I have here, the event will include live music, concerts, free family event activities, a town-wide art walk, an artisan crafts fair, and a series of sponsored collaborative art projects, murals, sculptures, mosaics, and more that will beautify and energize our environment. Family jam for musicians of all ages to perform and play together. So it's essentially um, a big, big event. That's uh, also including the White River Craft Center. So, a lot of different partners. Right. And I had a conversation with Karen last week, and I think that this is, the, that sounds like the intent of this is to be more of a rolling of series of events throughout the summer. That's right. Not just a one time event, but something along the lines of what Gifford does with their concert series. Mm -hmm. And on a, yeah, I think it was either a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, they were going to try to move this into the village. So they would, some of the stuff would start at Chandler, but they would try to take in uh, <clears throat> up through, you know, as the event grew, possibly they could secure a merchant's row on a Sunday afternoon or something along those lines. I like it would be a good thing. Yeah, so we need a motion to authorize them to apply. So move. It's my turn. Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> but I'm not going to jump in too quick. Okay. Do so we have a motion and a second? Second. All those in favor? <laughs> All right. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Old business. This is a draft agreement, but it looks like it's the final agreement. Uh, there was some changes from the previous agreement that the, the board had um, approved. Um, our attorney uh, 
went back to the SALs and said this is the approval that the, the agreement that the board had approved um, with the edits because there were some um, edits that needed to be made including the name of the road which is Bethel um, or East Bethel Road. There was also a request by um, Mr. Sauls and the request was to have the penalties owed uh, not paid to the town at one time by the end of October but spread out over the year to help them with their financial situation. Um, the, the town's attorney spoke with them, related to me, shared his counsel. Um, the goal for us at, in this situation was to clear it up as opposed to put Mr. Sauls in a financial hardship. And so we said, sure, so long as the payments are made and if the payments are not made uh, in accordance with the agreement, then penalties would be uh, added, including interest for the whole year's worth of worth of uh, payments. So we felt that was fair, and they agreed. And this is a new a new agreement. Um, the majority of the document, with the exception of the payment schedule, is the same as what was approved by the board. And all the pictures with the red squiggly lines around them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> wanted to make sure everybody Specifics. knew what was what was happening. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments on the agreement? Mm -hmm. Motion to accept. Do you do you accept this agreement between the town and the solvers? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Carries. Other business? Hang on, let's board other business first. Okay. You would have been under I, I, I understand public that. comment. I did not realize you were going to zip through. So I just quickly We're rolling. And I was late from work. So we are rolling. I would respectfully ask to just make my report there. We'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any other business, Adolfo? Uh, no other business, just the manager's report. Yeah. Okay. We'll go back up to public comment for the oh, late arrivers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a couple of of word clouds to share from you, share with you from the Board of Trustees um, recent retreat that we, where we, I think she's got these double sided. Yeah, she does. Um, word clouds are kind of a nice way of looking at piles of word data um, to see which themes seem to drop, um, jump out. Um, one of the themes that certainly jumped out for the trustees was looking at the lifestyle in Vermont, um, in Randolph, and you know, in Randolph, and what we, how we can enhance that and how we can make that fit, and also programming for our youth. And so, as we talked, um, we, our priorities in the short term seem to surround increasing our capacity to host more events. Um, the Harry Potter Day. You know, as I reported, I think the last time I had the privilege of coming here was a huge success. Um, and we have had several other events like the um, Drag Queen Story Hour that we had last Friday that had more than 80 people in attendance, parents and children. Um, and um, Star Wars Day, which is coming up on this Saturday. We'd like to be able to do more of that. Um, we'd like to reach out to, you know, be able to hit our community where it is living and provide um, opportunities for them to experience all kinds of things. Um, over the long term, um, we would like the library to be able to accommodate community events. Um, we'd like meetings to be able to be held there. We would like increased like to figure out how to have increased capacity to have groups be there um, to meet um, the concerns of parents that, you know, folks that come into the library along with the wishes of folks that can, you know, we are not the same. The library was built a hundred years ago and we are not the same town that we were then and we ask different things of our library than we did then. And so to have the space meet those, those different asks of the community, I think would be a really important, we all think would be an important thing. Um, we followed what's a, a format called the Golden Circle when we did our retreat, which takes a look at the things, first the things that we currently do, um, and then how do we currently make them happen, 
and what is it that we want to do. And so all of the, the data that we had, we took data from all of the community meetings that have been held about what Randolph looks like in the future. Um, they are all in a spread, spreadsheet. There are 1,300 data points. Um, we are happy to share that spreadsheet with the board if you would like to look at them. Um, and so that you can see the input that we received from the various groups that went around town. And just, we just want you to know that, you know, in terms of how we spend our money and how we respond to the community at large, that we are trying to listen. Um, it feels as though that's one of the great needs is for people of different viewpoints to feel like they, like somebody is listening to them and trying to respond to their needs. And so the trustees are, are very committed to that. And I thank you for letting me insert myself. I really, I looked at the agenda. You had two meetings. I thought, okay, it's all right if I'm down here a little late when I get out of work. No. They were easy. <laughs> you didn't look at what those meetings last, were about. Well, I did. I read those agendas. I thought, town can't play. Somebody's going to want to talk about that, you know? So, well, it's been talked about a got, lot. Last time I got caught with meetings ahead of the select board meeting, I was here for like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for public comments. Yeah, never know what's so, going to happen. Thank you very much. We, you know, we as always welcome input from the select board, um, but we do want you to know that we are thinking, you know, and, and we are thinking about what people want and what people need and how they are expressing it and how the library can fit into those asks of the community in those places. Okay. Great. If there are questions, I so as you collect your data, where were you getting your data sets from? I'm um, sorry. We, we got it from everything, actually. Matt, we, we took it from the Randolph Revitalized surveys that were done. We did a survey at our <coughs> meeting. We kind of collected any time people, a group has gone out and asked the community what they want. We brought all of that back. So out of all those studies, if I'm making the connection correctly, mm -hmm. lifestyle was the most important thing that came it, out of it that? It was huge. Not economic development, which seems like the not, pro well, focus of the community. Well, economic development happened, you know, it, and if you look at the cloud, economic development is in larger types. So when you look at a word cloud, the bigger the word and the bolder the type, the more frequently something was mentioned. Um, and economic development is certainly present there, but the way that we choose to live and the, you know, the resources that we offer, however, those groups defined lifestyle that seems seem to have been yeah, a big concern. So, like, what was this, so business also had yeah, similar. Bowl, the more the same, if you combine yeah. That one, so I mean, to just so what was the business part of the business? Is it more business? No. More. I, what I was? Would, I would rather send you the data. I'd love to see. Can I? Yeah. So can you put that in yourself. an email? I'd love I mean, to see it. Could. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to take a look it's at it. It's a spreadsheet. It, it's email size. So yeah, I'm great. happy to send that to the board. Or have I'd love to, to ship it sure. off to Adelpho. So Maybe we should all take a look at it. It's it's an aggregation of all of the various constituencies that have held meetings around town. Um, mm -hmm. And what Amy did, I think, was to you know, use the categorizations that happened at those meetings as people grouped stuff together um, and built the word cloud to see what popped. So, and, and then we looked at, you know, what popped and, okay, so how does the library facilitate this? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the library's role in that? Yeah, yeah, because it's not the same as it was. No, it's Four years ago, you know, it's not the same as it was when I, really, when I first started on the board four years ago. So, so we, we need to keep moving with, with the town and with the vision. I'd okay. love to see it. Thank you. Awesome. I will make sure that you get it. Thank you. Now we'll drop down to manager's report. Uh, I'll try not to take a, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you still get a little golf in here if you finish up there. You know, we can go for a couple yeah, holes right. here. <laughs> um, the first item is, is related to Kimball. Um, with the uh, event that the, the library just recently had, uh, we... I've engaged in conversations with uh, the library director, with Amy, and I've expressed to her the email messages that arrived and the type of programming that, um, that was held at the library. And also shared with her some of the recommendations that residents were recommending to the town in terms of the types of events that 
Uh, for example, they would say, well, if this event is happening, then why can't we have this event? And the library's response was, absolutely. You know, you know, have them call us, and then we could start scheduling the event, um, and we could, we could host it for them. So the libraries seem to understand what the programming that they had scheduled for last weekend, the type of impact it would have. They're also very much prepared to work with anybody who has alternative views and wants to program or wants to schedule other programs that they feel are counter to that. Um, they're willing to work with them. So I wanted to share that with the board so that you, at the very least, would all know that the library is open to working with everybody as opposed to just you know this one lifestyle angle. That um, I think it did achieve one thing, and switch people realize that Kimball is in town. Yeah. <laughs> the events, you know. Now how to spell the well, name actually, of it in their they, emails. They it, <laughs> brought out a ton of suggestions for other things. They did. Um, Which I think is great because if they're willing to host those kind of things, I don't think it necessarily is a bad thing that, that maybe that opened up, yeah. you know, an opportunity. I, you know, I think Trini's right. People now know that the library is there and they now know that if they wanted to plan a different type of event, they could. Mm -hmm. And that the library wouldn't say no to them. Of course, they would have to vet to see what the event is, but they're open to, to doing that. Um, well, so you look on the back of your page, events was... Was another thing. Okay, so... Um, um, can the public comment on the event last week? Or on... Um, well, they, we're, not in, uh, we're not here to discuss the event itself. Oh, no, I'm no. Just it's just the that feedback they, that came to the town. If they yeah. were offended, they shouldn't go. Well, this is more on what the impact yeah. to the town staff was yeah. with the emails that were coming in and how they were handled yeah. that we're talking about yet. Yeah, that's yeah. no, we don't want to talk about it. Okay, you got a lot. That's <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah. Um, the next item would be the zoning administrator recruitment process. It's still ongoing. Uh, we've received um, most recently with the new recruitment process. We've had one applicant submit uh, paperwork. Uh, the process is get, or the, pro, the recruitment process is going to stay open until we have uh, the appropriate candidates. Uh, but if, up until now, we don't feel comfortable with the limited pool that we have available for the position. We want to make sure we hire the right person that will help us. Um, we've expanded our recruitment search to um, VTC and VTC contacts with our contacts with Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation. Ask them to relay the information as as wide as they can in the hopes of finding someone with experience or somebody willing to, to help us in this role. So, search continues. Mm -hmm. uh, until then, come to me. We'll try to figure it out. Um, uh, yeah, East Randolph Community Group and the East Randolph Fire Department uh, and I have had conversations about a welcome to East Randolph sign, similar to the one on 12, similar to the one in Randolph Center. Um, they've asked if the town would be interested in working with them to install a similar looking sign for East Randolph. I've said, absolutely, let's you know, find a location. We know what the cost would be. We have funds aside for community improvements, which this would fall under. Um, so if we have the appropriate location and the costs remain similar or true to what they were before, we could bring it to the board and ask us to, to move forward with that project. Roughly about $1,500 for a handmade sign. And we had a conversation a few years ago about the sign, and at the time there was direction given to try to keep them consistent, yeah. not let mm -hmm. each little part of town create their own design, their own, if it's one town, that they should, the signs are good, Same but way. they should be consistent. And there was one put over there, it's put right in front of the hall. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that site was chosen. That wasn't part of that piece. But the one that was made for over there, that's where it went. Was, yeah. And it's probably still right there. It's still there. Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. We want to maintain a consistency. The one that was put in Randolph Center, it was as close to the older one as possible, given that it was a different, different artist or a different woodworker that we had selected. But definitely going to try to keep it as consistent as possible. Yeah. <coughs> um, they have a thought where they want it. They have haven't no decided on a location yet. Okay. So, Just curious. I got yeah. three different, four different ways to get in there. <laughs> and they did say that it would get one because everyone has one. Everybody's got so one. It wouldn't be pick one the most ideal location. spot. Yeah. Pick your best candidate. 
<laughs> okay. So we may not settle on a place for a year, but we'll figure it out. We'll get a little time. Um, it's got to be let me. Them, they, can, <laughs> they can discuss that amongst themselves. We have a, uh, uh, a requirement that needs to be fulfilled uh, due to the town's participation in the Armstrong Mobile Home Park um, CDBG grant that uh, we applied for on behalf of the uh, uh, Randolph Area Community Development Corporation. The closeout of that project requires a second hearing, um, and the hearing would have to be held before October 1st. So uh, if the board is open to it, we could have a hearing scheduled for just immediately before next month's select board meeting, uh, similar to today, and that would fulfill the CDBG requirement. Mm -hmm. We're working with, with them on that project. Uh, two huge pieces of news, one bigger than the other. So I'll start with the smaller one of the two. Um, we have been in communication with EC Fiber. EC Fiber has asked if um, they could place their internet router or internet communication device here at Town Hall. Um, what they've offered in exchange is to provide Town Hall with free internet service and also one additional town building within the village with uh, free internet service. Um, the town has uh, identified that the internet service provided by EC Fiber would exceed our internet capability now. Um, they also would save taxpayers roughly about $5,000 a year in internet costs. So we'd get free internet uh, and also get higher speeds. I assured EC Fiber that we wouldn't all be watching movies at Town Hall, <laughs> but we could <laughs> if we all wanted to. But uh, uh, you set up a little Wi Fi -Fi hub and you could have your little stuff little screen outside here. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Times Square. Put yeah. Up big yeah, movie night. <laughs> yeah, movie night. On the town lawn. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> the town lawn. <laughs> also, can I just clarify? Sure. I, I think that is, is it a hub that they're asking for? Or you um, said server. Uh, it would be a hub. It's a hub. And um, we received a draft agreement today. I informed EC Fiber that because it arrived today, I couldn't bring it to the board because it requires some back and forth. But I did commit to informing them that the agreement had arrived. The requirements in there essentially fit what our conversation has been, which is internet exchange for hosting the, the hub. Um, one of the benefits of having the hub here is that we also have an emergency um, generator, which mm -hmm. would keep the hub working in times of emergency. Mm -hmm. Our internet, or not internet costs, our electrical costs for having the hub on a yearly basis would be in the low hundreds in exchange for the thousands of savings that we would get in internet costs. So uh, when we have a more less draft agreement, uh, I could bring it to the board for the board of review. So far, everything looks good. Seems where, good. Where would it actually go? Uh, EC Fiber is hoping to install it in the gated area where the emergency generator is located now. Uh, so it would have to be outdoors, and we would have to find a way at EC Fiber's expense to connect it to our emergency generator uh, electrical supply. So, but that's, that's they're willing to pay for all that infrastructure. So, yeah. so that's great. The so infrastructure. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask. That's a good sign for. Others of us getting EC fiber. So. It's, it's a part of their growth, absolutely. Um, it also would potentially work with one of our ongoing partnerships with RACDC, and they're planning to have a, a downtown Wi Fi. Um, RACDC would like to have a downtown Wi Fi as part of the downtown designation program efforts. Um, I didn't have any opposition to the hub that we have here being Wi Fi available or Wi Fi friendly. Um, so long as there would not be a back way to enter town hall systems through the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. capability. So EC Fiber says that they were more than comfortable with the technology that they would put in here that it would prevent or have a firewall so no one mm -hmm. could access the town systems. So um, helping with the partnership. Sounds good. So, the bigger piece of news is something that I shared with the board is that we were awarded a Northern Borders grant, uh, $450,000. We're very happy about it. Um, we applied for 500000 so I've got words to share with the people who awarded the grant. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, those are the two words I was to share with them. Uh, no, we're very, very pleased with the award. Um, that is just one piece of the overall project uh, cost. So we're going to also apply for a community development block grant 
the amount of five hundred thousand um, dollars. We are required to have a village income survey or a water district survey for that that grant. Um, we've partnered with a different group in the past that pro provided us with an income survey. We've asked them again for help. They've committed to providing the income survey free, uh, free of charge or free of cost. So we'll get that free. Um, so we're moving forward with, with the well and uh, reservoir project, at least conceptually. <coughs> what do you think the timeline is for that? Uh, we probably will not apply for CDBG grant, won't be ready for it because of the income survey requirements until in the in the springtime. First year. Mm -hmm. um, so if we do move forward, in, when we did apply for Northern Borders, it was contingent upon all these other funding sources. Mm -hmm. um, so if we are successful with the springtime application, um, you know, probably maybe by, I wouldn't say construction next calendar year, but maybe the start of 2021, somewhere around there. There's um, a timeline on spending the Northern Borders. I believe it was 18 months from the start of construction is the time. Uh, no, that's something. I'm crossing the two. Um, we would be within the construction timeline start of the project if we started early in 2021. I don't remember the actual time frame for it, mm -hmm. but we would Which be. you got to start construction in 12 months. Okay. I'd have to go back to That's where, where we our team with that. So. Um. The one way you can play that is if your grant was contingent upon the CDBG grant, you mm -hmm. can argue with them that your 12 months shouldn't start until you've met the other contingencies. Yeah. We've done that. We've been successful. <laughs> but then the other side of that, why couldn't you do some of the, why couldn't you phase the project? Why couldn't it be phased in? I mean, well testing and all that stuff. Because CDBG, you can get an exception and use it You can get an match. exception. But if you're going to deal with northern borders, why couldn't you do part of the project earlier? Because it's not 100% funding. I see. You can use the CDBG as match if they mm -hmm. approve it in advance. Okay, got it. All right. There's also other funding sources we hope to go after, which is USDA as well, and uh, mm -hmm. negative interest loan okay. funding. So, But I, we are working with um, our CDBG contacts uh, just to make sure that this grant doesn't affect that application. They don't think it will, but we'll work with our Northern Borders staff mm -hmm. to ensure that their timeline doesn't start until they have our CDBG funding in place. So. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, we had a meeting with RECDC recently regarding their managing of the downtown designation project um, or program. Uh, we felt uh, this is a, one of the follow-up meetings. We felt like it was a good meeting. We discussed um, different types of events. We discussed issues with bears in the community and how it's affecting one of the events that they had proposed for later this year. The berry and honey. Bear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We talked about donuts in a different part of town to keep the bears from going to the event. But um, we may have found an alternate location for the event in October. Um, which uh, RACDC has agreed to, to explore. We thought it would be a great, great event over at the uh, disc golf uh, course over at the park. Mm -hmm. um, the conversation also spurred into ways of how to increase increase density for events that are already happening in town. Uh, just if, if we could add different smaller events to the bigger events just to invite more people. Um, the conversation then also leaned to how to engage the business community into these events like uh, Safe and Seen, um, out of that came potential uh, competitions between our business communities for window decorating, uh, ways to get them involved and get the community involved to see the windows and uh, not just come around and ask for candy, but be more of a family-friendly family <coughs> event. Uh, we felt that that was a great, great uh, way to spice up the events that we already have, so we're going to move forward with it. Uh, I volunteered to schedule a meeting between all of our, our larger event holders. <coughs> they can see in 4th of July, uh, Bluegrass Festival, New World Festival, Palm Town. Get all of those organizations or those event coordinators in one room and ask them how the town can help their event, how they can potentially help some of the smaller events to promote uh, uh, more density at their events like Palm Town, try to get more people to, to attend those. We also had a breakdown of, at the very least, a verbal breakdown of what events happen in, in Randolph over the course of a year. And we found that 
pretty much nine out of the 12 months we have an event happening in town and it's just a matter of being able to promote those events more and more and more or to attach smaller little things to those bigger events so we become more of an active community year round. Um, so I haven't started scheduling that meeting. We had our meeting with RCDC yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. So um, we hope to have a much bigger meeting of all of our event organizers over the next few weeks. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Larry? That you thought? No, just that it felt like a really positive, productive meeting, and hopefully we'll spur some more good stuff yep. coming out of it. The goal is to really uh, let these event organizers know that the town likes that they that they are doing their events, and that we want to be as uh, helpful to them as possible, so that they could help us in our local businesses. So. More information to come. Uh, the last thing I have is we have one of our properties in town that I've shared with everyone over email about, uh, which is at 10 Dudley Street. We have followed up with the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, they have essentially said to me that there are other priority projects and that they understand that the property owner has ignored DEC's requirement to clean up the property property owner has accumulated more debris onto the property which is keeping uh, DEC personnel from going on to the site and making sure that they complied with DEC's order from 2010. Their response to the town uh, was, well, the town should get rid of the debris and then we'll show up and clean up or make sure that the cleanup actually happened. So still looking for help from our state legislators and uh, the governor's office to force DEC to do what it threatened the owner to do 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, um, and not let this go. We're also going to continue to push on the municipal level so that the property is in accordance with the town's chunk and solid waste ordinance. The challenge with not having help from our partner with DEC is that the town going at it alone will probably take us up to two years to clean up the property, which is what's been the standard over the last multiple offenses from this property. So. We're going to push on different angles, uh, try to get as much support to clean up the property. Maybe we're talking to Brookfield about the fun they're having. I think they're on 10 or 11 years for that one. They've won in court multiple times, and the state still won't step in and help them. So, yeah. It's, uh, I, they it, feel the pain, too. It's a challenge. I jokingly had mentioned to folks that my style is show up with, you know, a couple of ten wheelers, a couple of staff members, just clear it all out, and you know, oh well, you know, take it to court. Our attorney said, "Don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff's department advised me not to do that, so I can't do that. But, but it was an option for a short period of time. Kafa, um, did you look into the? Um, the junk that's in the town right away and what we might be able to do about that. I did. Um, I have not spoken with, uh, well, I spoke with the Sheriff's Department, with our, our local commanding deputy. Um, his position is that if the town was going to do work, if we were going to clear the road, if we were going to do work along the entire right of way, that we could force them to move it. They could then move it and then put it back. Um, so we wouldn't be able to do it for just one property, it would have to be for everyone. We've, we found out that if we asked everybody to push the trucks back because we're going to mow the ends of the roads, that could happen, but it wouldn't have the desired effect of clearing at the very least some of the items that are sticking into the right of way. They could, they could move them and then put them right back. Except there's nowhere for them to put them. Yeah. So you have to move them off site. Yeah. Twice a month for three months. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's still an option. We're still working on it. And that's just one of several properties. And that's where we are with that property. Just keep on moving on. Just got to keep mm -hmm. on staying on top of it. Yeah. So I did notice that trailer uh, stick, sticking out into the road again. It sticks out. Um, we, the Sheriff's Department. Uh, has confirmed to me that nowhere in state statute that discusses parking, uh, it all addresses vehicles. It doesn't address trailers. And we don't know why, but we have a feeling it's because of our 
agriculture friendly uh, position with the state and trailers are usually a part of the agriculture industry and we can leave them on the roads and so there is no real mechanism to ticket trailers especially the type that's in front of that property um, if we were to ticket even if we were to ticket uh, the feeling is that the person wouldn't pay they would just accumulate tickets and mm -hmm. they wouldn't be how long has it been there um, I know I noticed it when an issue came two weeks ago and it does stick out a little onto the road the issue was that it was obstructing the right of way. It doesn't stick out very much, but it sticks out enough to, for me to be able to say it obstructs the right of way. But because um, there is nothing that we could, well, say there's nothing that we could do. There is no indication that we could ticket trailers as we could ticket vehicles that are on the road. We couldn't even ticket the actual trailer itself. Um, according to the Sheriff's Department, and that was this morning. Um, I, I'm turning over as much as I can, you know, yeah. tricks wise or anything else to, to clean it up. So can it be can it be towed as of November fifteenth? Overnight yeah. parking. <laughs> sure. Just. Yeah. If it wasn't partially on there, as you could call it, abandoned yeah. vehicle, then yeah. get it with that. I, I hadn't thought of that. We could do it. We'd have to wait till we November fifteenth. <laughs> Or change our ordinance for the snow plan and park on trees. That's right. What day is it? We'll change it, then we'll change it back August afterwards. <laughs> so this, it'll be a heavy lift uh, to clean it up, especially if the state isn't helping, but hopefully we can get some help because of the environmental contamination that has been identified on the property. Uh, and that's all I have. For, I have one last thing. Uh, we are, town staff and I are discussing ways to just rid ourselves of uh, equipment and stuff that we just don't need that's sitting around. Uh, and that conversation came from radios and cell phones that we've had that date back 10, 15 years that are really no good to us anymore. Uh, as we transitioned from the Randolph Police Department to the Sheriff's Department, we find ourselves with six cell phones that we no longer need. They're uh, iPhone six phones that we can put them up for sale. We're gonna, you know, unless there are any objections from the board, we're gonna just put them out and the revenue of the sale of the phones will go back to the police district because that's why they were purchased for in the, in the first place. Um, there's also the question of the town manager car. You know, I live across the street and, you know, Unless the board has a desire to change town managers, the next one probably won't come around for a few years. And by that point, the car will be much older and ready to be traded in. So the thought had circulated about potentially putting the car up for auction so that the revenue can then just be plugged into the, into the town. So. You don't use it when you go to meetings in different places and whatnot? Um, the maintenance of the vehicle. Um, is because it's getting older, it's going to cost more, and it would cost less for us to just pay for the mileage. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, for meetings in Montpelier, and it really, in town driving, I would just hop into one of the trucks with our highway drivers and go there. It probably would be safer in the wintertime for me to be in one of the bigger trucks than in the, in the Honda. So it isn't something that I'm, you know, prepared to tell the board we're actually going to do it, we're going to sell it, we're trying to first figure out how much we could potentially get and if it's an acceptable amount, we bring it back to the board and say, this is how much we would get for the car, this is how much we typically would get mileage wise if we sell the car. Because um, at the moment it's mostly being used for staff if they do have a training, I ask them to take the town manager car and they could drive to it instead of driving their own car for mileage. So but for the most part it sits in the parking lot. Shannon drives it sometimes to post notices, but. And it's annual maintenance, registration, mm -hmm. insurance, expenses also? Uh, the registration is free because it's registered to the town, okay. so it doesn't cost us, but the vehicle itself, it's so it's got some brake issues now, it's making some interesting noises. Um, Just turn the radio off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I do. <laughs> Uh, but once I have more concrete amounts, um, I'll certainly bring it to the board because if we could potentially use yeah. that money to offset some of the cost for one of our big 10-wheelers if we have to upgrade soon, 
they could be used for that. For those costs. Yeah. Yeah. I think probably that would be cheaper to pay mileage than it would be to own and maintain a car. On the uh, phones, if you'd consider offering those to the fire departments, so they don't even need a plan, but we're doing a lot of stuff with pre-incident planning, our mm -hmm. hazard tracking sheets, our you know, STF, SDS sheets, all that other stuff, that we can go on there and they can go, because we have one, right, the town provides on one of the engines, yeah. but if you have pre-incident plans on there, if you have to take pictures of something, it'd be nice to have one on each, each of the trucks or a couple of different trucks for each department. Um, as tools there, and it, you know, wouldn't cost any. Don't need a plan with them, just no. just as a mini. Computer just as a little mini computer. computer. Yeah. That's actually a good idea. That's yeah. Partially why we had them for the police department was so that they would only use them for photographs and for on duty uh, calls, so that if they were ever subpoenaed or mm -hmm. the, the phone needed to be taken away for a case, they could take that phone and not their personal phone. So it's a good idea. We could look into transferring the phones one yep. for every fire truck. Sure. I don't think we have enough well, phones for all the time. Them up yeah. You can divvy them up between them. <laughs> three departments. Two for department or something if they yeah. want them. Two for departments if they, they want them. Yeah. If they're six of them. Yeah, absolutely. I know we'd certainly have a value. <laughs> value usage for them. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, and that's it. That's all I have for the manager report. Sorry, that's so long. Executive session. Uh, for none for this meeting. Okay. Just okay. Are we going back to the fire stuff? Or, or this well, he said he was going to have them come back later. Okay. Yeah, I'll have the sheriff's department visit. They said they would be here today. Maybe they just... Good call. Yeah. Make it. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn? Yep. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.